All right, this is going to be problem 4.114. This is a single inlet transient state problem. We're looking at a energy storage using a cavern down here and a compressor right here that takes ambient air during off-peak hours. And the energy is turning on the compressor to pump air into the cavern, pressurize the cavern so that during off or on-peak hours, we can use the pressurized air to then come out and turn a turbine, which is off, off the picture here, to generate electricity to help power devices and the grid uh, during high peak electricity use hours. All right? So we're given that the volume of this cavernous space is 10 to the fifth or 100,000 cubic meters. The ambient air around here that we're drawing from is initially at 290 Kelvin and at a pressure of one bar. After we pressurize uh, this cavern, so that's the state of the, uh, the cavern initially. So after we pressurize it, the cavern is then at 790 Kelvin and at a pressure of 21 bar. All right, this is all we know. The single inlet problem is that we go and we're only pumping air into the cavern, all right? So we're, not assume, we're assuming that no air is leaving the cavern at this point. Later on, not including this problem, air will then leave and power, the gener or power that uh, turbine, which we're not gonna talk about, all right? So the first thing we're gonna need to look up is the enthalpy and internal energy at these states. So I pick, picked out the tables that we'll need to use. These are tables A22. We know initially that we're at 290 Kelvin, so we're right about here, 290 Kelvin. All right, we're gonna pick out that our enthalpy at this point, so this will be at the end state, this is enthalpy of the air coming in, is 290.16 kilojoules per kilogram coming in, and you can see that, uh, I believe, right here. Also, internal energy, um, this is a, the state coming in, so I'll list this as one, state one, which you can see right here, is at 206.91 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Next, we're gonna need at this state too, the final state, 790 Kelvin, which is down here, We'll need that internal energy, specific energy. So I'll call this state two, the final state. And we know that one is off the table, 584.21 kilojoules per kilogram. And you can see that right around here, all right? So this is our problem statement. If you need to read it again, go ahead and pause here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is that we need to write out our uh, transient uh, energy and rate balance. Um, all right, so we know that we've been using here change in mass of our control volume with respect to time is going to be our m dot cv, all right? So this is our uh, rate of change of mass of our control volume, all right? We're also going to say that our change in energy with respect to time of our control volume is going to be our heat transfer rate times, or minus our uh, energy transfer due to work rate plus our energy in times our mass flow rate coming in. We don't have anything flowing out, so we don't have to worry about that. It did say that we can neglect any um, heat transfer, so we can get rid of that term. All right, so if we were to integrate this with respect to time, we can rewrite this and say that we have We have a 
right? For one inlet problem, we have our change in internal energy is equal to our uh, net work energy transfer plus our enthalpy at the inlet, which we've just written down over here, times our change in uh, mass from our state two minus our state one. All right, so this is our initial minus our, fi our final minus our initial. All right, I can rewrite this right here as the mass times the specific internal energy, and then I can rearrange terms to put these two on the same side so that we are calculating this term here. All right, so we're trying to find the work required by the compressor along with the mass of the air at the initial and the final states. All right. So I'm going to rearrange these terms and say I want the work of our control volume on one side. I'm going to rearrange this term right here and put this in terms of our mass times specific internal energy, mass at state one times specific internal energy at, specific internal energy at that state. Rearrange this to put it on that side. All right, so this is that rearranged. Now, I don't know these mass terms here. I have looked up the specific internal energy and the specific enthalpy here that we've written down right there. So we need to take a break real quick and find the mass at the initial state and the final state. We did say we're dealing with air. We can assume that this is an ideal gas. So let's use that. All right, so I'll come back to here. So let's come over here and say, dealing with an ideal gas. We're dealing with air. All right, so let's find mass one, P1, V over RT1. You can say that this is equal to, I have pressure, 10 to the 5 Newton per meter square. This is our one bar. Volume, 10 to the 5th cubic meter. R, and I'm going to put this over the molar mass of air. So this was 8314 over 28.97. The units for this would be Newton meter over kilogram Kelvin, all right? And then temperature at initial state was 290 Kelvin, all right? It's just sanity check here. Meter cube over meter square gives us Newton meter, Newton meter cancels out with Newton meter, Kelvin cancels out with Kelvin. Kilogram over here goes to the top, so this should give us kilogram. We're looking for mass, so this is okay. All right, so this gives us Mass 1 is 1 1.2 times 10 to the 5th kilograms. All right. Same process for mass 2. We're at Pressure two, same volume because the cavern volume doesn't change. R and now T2, all right. Pressure two was 21 bar, it's given over here. So we have 21 times 10 to the fifth Newton per meter square. Volume was 10 to the fifth cubic meter over 8314 Newton meter over 28.97 kilogram Kelvin. We're now at 790 Kelvin. Again, Newton meter over Newton meter, Kelvin over Kelvin. So this gives us kilogram. I'll write it down here. This gives us 9.26 times 10 to the fifth kilograms for 
mass 2. All right? We now have mass 1, mass 2, specific internal energy 1 and 2, and enthalpy at the input, at the inlet of air, which doesn't change because the air is on the outside and it's always coming in at the same. So this doesn't change, it's constant. Right? So we now know this, 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 this. We now know all of our terms. Right? So we can plug those in. Plug in values. And this is going to give you value of 2.82 times 10 to the eighth kilojoules. It asks for in gigajoules, right? Well, there's kilojoules, a thousand kilojoules is megajoules, and a thousand megajoules is gigajoules. So let's convert that. That'll be 282 gigajoules the energy required by the compressor to fill up that cavern full of air to 21 bar at 790 degree Kelvin all right at some later high peak energy draw time we can then use the energy stored within that cavern to then decrease the pressure withdrawing the air to turn a turbine, to turn a generator, generate electricity, and then power homes and buildings and whatever else devices, right? This is a transient state problem, single inlet, which allows us to simplify this expression right here, right? Calculated our mass using the ideal gas model here, plugged in our terms, calculate the energy consumption by the compressor here, and our mass at the final state and the initial state there.